way the a new dashboard as well as the SharePoint integration for PPM. So the agenda today will cover project workspaces, which is uh, the SharePoint integration with PPM, and then we'll cover the PPM analytics dashboard. I'll go through and demo those and then do some Q&A, so it'll be quick. So project workspaces. This is an integration that allows basically seamless synchronization between PPM and SharePoint, and you can actually embed the SharePoint site directly in your PPM project overview page, and there's automatic creation of a project. So really it's that enterprise project collaboration level. And I'll walk through some of the key benefits and then we'll go to the demo and show how it works. But um, some of the key benefits are you get instant dashboard. You do get you can use the SharePoint document management inside of PPM. So you can drag and drop documents into a SharePoint site from within PPM. It's a very easy implementation. This is something that can be implemented in a few days. It allows for some extendable reporting for HP PPM on the SharePoint side, and I'll show that and then increase accessibility and collaboration. So what happens is when you create a project in PPM, you can configure project workspaces to instantly create a project within SharePoint. And, that project, and when that project is created, it handles the security for SharePoint, so the project manager is given site admin rights, and then team participants from the project, whether they be from the work plan or they be in the participant model, are given view-only access rights. And as participants are added, every time that they're added to PPM, the SharePoint rights are automatically created. So all of that is automated. And then even when you initially create a project, there's an initial configuration of a SharePoint template that defines the layout of those project sites as they're automatically created. And I'll walk through what that can look like. Um, on the document management side, and I'll show this, where you can drag and drop files into the SharePoint site in PPM and utilize the check-in and check-out capabilities to really allow for sharing those project documents with an extended team. And then you can also then embed that SharePoint document workflow um, with those documents as well. As I mentioned, up and running in a few days with a very scripted installation. There's minor specific configurations, and we've embedded it directly into the project overview page in PPM. On the extendable reporting side, and I'll show this as we go through the demo, the ability to create views in HP that are automatically exposed in SharePoint, and then you can add web parts in SharePoint to report from PPM, and I'll show how that works. And really, the, the whole thing about this is the ability to increase accessibility of that information in PPM and SharePoint and, and increase the collaboration so that if you do have SharePoint sites, those can be you know, a simplified view for extended team members where you publish the data from PPM into SharePoint. The second solution I'll talk about is a new solution that we're just introducing, PPM Analytics Solution. And this is a real-time enterprise level reporting solution that, that sits on top of PPM. So you get real time access to the PPM data from a desktop or any mobile device. This is, is it's written in HTML5, so it uh, has the ability to run on any mobile device. And some of the initial views that we're providing are really around the, the project portfolio health and trending and a roadmap view. And then some resource supply and demand analysis and consistent project status reporting. And I'll walk through this solution as well. This just gives you a little bit more drill down into the real-time access to the, the roadmap, the, the resource uh, capabilities, uh, and things like that. So those are some quick slides to talk about what we're going to go over today. And then I'll just quickly jump into the demo. So I'll first go through project workspaces. Uh, the SharePoint integration, and then we'll, we'll jump into the analytics. In the SharePoint integration, I'm actually in a project. And let me just go back to my, my dashboard. So you can see I'm logged in here, and I have a portal with a project on it. And this project I've integrated with SharePoint. So when I open the project, it actually will bring up a portal within the project overview. So this is your standard project overview page. And we've enabled this SharePoint portlet on the project overview page. And this is actually embedding the SharePoint site within the scope of the PPM project overview. So 
one of the features I mentioned was the ability to drag and drop documents. And so if you're sitting in Pair SharePoint and you want to drop, I'm sorry, in PPM, and you want to drop a document within the scope of that project, it's as simple as taking it on your desktop and dragging it in. So you can see then that that file is now part of the SharePoint site, and you have full capabilities of that file now that you have with SharePoint, including sharing, following, adding uh, the capabilities for a workflow and other things with that file. So I can go ahead and also delete that file, and it deletes it from the SharePoint site. So I'm going to actually open this SharePoint site in a new window, actually a new tab, so I can see the full site and show you what it looks like in SharePoint. So this is actually a direct link to that site in SharePoint. And this template that we've defined is a template that you can define and then have apply to all the projects that are created within PPM. And so I did some things just to demonstrate the reporting capabilities Whereas you have the ability to bring like financial information over and link directly back to the financial information or link directly back to the resource or the staffing profile. So as you're sitting within SharePoint, if you click on any of these links, you will go directly to PPM and modify that resource for Betsy Smith as an example, or to go to a financial summary it will actually load that particular financial summary directly. Uh, so that's the linking capability. And each of these is exposed within SharePoint by simply building out a web part. And I'll walk you through that uh, very quickly as to how you do that. So you come in and, and in SharePoint, and I'm actually editing the page at this point. So I have site admin right. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just edit this web part so that I can show you what it looks like. So fundamentally, when you're editing this web part for the resources assigned, you can see that I've created a data list visualization type. And I've selected this data source that's called DocBoss PW Out Staffing Profile. This is actually a view that I've created in HPPPM. And so if you create views of data in HPPPM, they can be exposed within the SharePoint site as web parts. Um, and you can see I'm filtering this down by the current project code, which is in my visualization. So this is getting the resources assigned specifically for that project. This does have HTML, so if you wanted to edit it and make it look different or apply different templates, you can do that, but it's as simple as that to add data. So you need the views in PPM, and then you can add the data in in the scope of the SharePoint site. So this is this is an example of a web part I created for a milestone as well. And so you can insert new web parts. You can do all of that associated with building out. The, the template and the website within SharePoint. And, and the minute that you save those changes and refresh it over here, you'll get that same site view within PPM. This is a, a generic dashboard that you can install and configure on top of HTTPM. And so I'm going to actually log into a PPM instance and what I've done is enabled an analytics dashboard on the PPM dashboard. And, and so part of installing this is enabling it on, on PPM. And so when you click on the analytics dashboard, we've really, in the first release of this, focused on three or four different areas, but specifically looking at, at the project health and the status. And um, this is 100% configurable, so you can configure from what you see in the tabs to what the filters are specific to your data. And the installation of this will take less than a day on somebody's PPM environment. So we can figure what project types you're looking at, what project statuses you want to bring into this. And even as we drill into this, I'll show you additional configurations that, that you can do within the solution. But, but fundamentally, I'm running this against the PPM instance, and you can actually get back to the PPM instance by going here and then come back to the, 
the dashboard so you can switch back and forth. And so the, this first visualization shows basically all of my projects and their overall health, cost schedule, and issue health coming directly from the PPM projects. And you can filter this. So in this case, I have several business units within PPM data structure, so I can filter it, say, down to the delivery business unit, and that will actually go out and show me the project and status, et cetera, for those. And then you can drill into, like, those projects that are specifically read from a schedule health perspective. And then what happens when you drill in is you get a list of all of the fields that are standard project fields plus the field group. And then if you have and everybody has enabled their own fields on the project request, you can configure those fields to show up in this listing. And you can sort by these fields just by double clicking. As an example, you can you know, add additional columns to this view or remove columns. And you can see these are all of the field group fields. So we have things like the total score and the value rating, the risk rating. Those all come from the project field group when you assign a project type in PPM. And so that's kind of the visualization of the table view. All of the tables are exportable to Excel, and it's a true Excel export. So when you click on it, it actually will open up in Excel, and it's a true XLS export. And so you get the visualization of the data in Excel and can do what you want to do. Um, they're also exportable to PDF. Um, throughout all of the tables export to Excel, and then the others export to PDF. So you can drill into the, the projects, you can drill into the risks and show the list, listing of risks that are associated in, in a particular. And once again, we included the field group field, but if on your risk request type you add additional fields, it's, it's a simple configuration to be able to add those fields to the solution. Now, the other thing that you can do within the scope of this is, and I'll show and this is the primary reason for launching this from PPM, is the ability to update project statuses. So we've built that in. So I'm going to search for my name. And what that's going to do is search all of these project fields for my name. And I'm going to pull up a specific project here and click on it and update the project status report. So this is actually the project status report. You can see all of these fields within this editable block, like description and executive status, plan start, recent accomplishments. All of these fields are configurable. So you can choose which fields you want to be editable within the project status report. And so you and, and because I'm the project manager and logged into PPM as Arcane, um, it, and because I'm the project manager, it allows me to edit this. So I can actually go in and then edit my project status and use rich text editing for the fields that I've allowed edit on, which is configurable. And so you can see like the plan start and finish, they're just they're not editable and that's a configuration. And so you can like put in um, you know additional stuff and then go ahead and, and update that. And you'll notice that that will change the last updated and so we keep multiple versions of that project status report within within the solution. And so really what's in here is these fields that you can edit. So you've got your schedule, cost, and issue health, your overall health, these configurable set of fields. And you can have, a, have an unlimited number of these that come in this section. And then we have the risks, issues, and scope changes. These are the same tables that you drill in the other. And then we have a, a visualization of the milestones. If you want to add a section of information, that's also configurable, a section of information to the project status report. And then you can export this project status report to PDF, and then you can mail it or do whatever you want to do with that PDF. So that's the project status reporting capability. And so I can update it if I'm the project manager from the PPM security perspective. And I'm going to just search for projects that I don't manage. And I'm just going to search for um, Cody as an example and pull up a project that Cody manages. And you'll see here that I can't edit uh, the project status report. So that security is controlled and enabled from PPM. 
So that's kind of an overview of the project page. The next page is really a roadmap page where we, we basically look at the project roadmap and give you a, a visualization of of what's here. So I'm, I'm kind of going to bring this in where, where we can see an example, a list of roadmaps, and you see the overall effort that's in that, or a list of projects, and you see their health. You can see some uh, proposals that are identified in the gray. And then you can actually drill into either any of these as well. Now, what you see here is configurable. And then you can actually get to the project status report from here as well. So if you're looking at the roadmap, you can get that visualization of the the projects and what's being executed and what the what the size of those projects are. And then the third piece is is the, the resources tab. And this this is really focused on looking at your demand versus capacity of overall resources and their associated utilization. So these filters, too, are configurable. We've got this configured where it, it has some roll-up resource pools and then child pools. But if you're looking at the overall organization, I basically have 31.25 FTEs in March. You can drill through and change the dates. So if I'm looking at March, I have 31.25 FTEs. The utilization is currently at 139%. I can switch between FTEs, hours, and days, and all of the associated things will switch. So you can see, as an example, I have 31 and a quarter FTEs in capacity, and that's consistent across the timeline. But if I change that to hours, it becomes variable because of holidays and other things. So we look at the calendars and we look at the working days and ensure that we have the right capacity. Um, and even in person days, you can see it's variable. And then each of these is drillable. So if you want to look at the capacity, you can see the capacity by resource pool. And if you want to look at the utilization, you can see that utilization percentage by resource pool. And then if you want to drill in and see the specific projects or, or workload categories that you're executing against, you can drill in and then actually get to the project status report for those. So that's one visualization of resources. And then if we go to the next page, I'm going to actually show you, and I'm going to focus back on this delivery organization. And so we look at the demand versus capacity, and we've got a couple of different drill down capabilities here. So this shows me as being 153% overutilized in the current period. We're making the assumption that all on-med demand, if that were met, would make us overutilized. But you can drill in and see specifically, um, in this case, by each resource, what they're assigned to. And so you ultimately get a table of every resource that's in that resource pool and what projects they're assigned to within the current period. And then this is exportable to Excel as well, so you can take it outside and work on it. Similarly, on the on-med demand, we've actually done this by role, so you can get a visualization of the demand by role for the resource pool and who's assigned to what, and that, that too is exportable. Um, and once again, you can drill in and see the specific resources within the pool, so you get a full visualization of the resources within the pools, and you can even drill in to look specifically at what is the on-met demand in the period, and this is actually broken by role, so that you can see all of that, and then you can search it by, sort of by project name, et cetera, within these tables, and once again, they're all exportable to Excel.